So you have just bought a property and you want to know how to put it onto QuickBooks. Well, watch this video as I show you how. So as the intro suggested, we are now going to enter the transactions of a property you have purchased into QuickBooks. And you may be faced with this particular situation whereby you have got a bunch of transactions, which I'm just going to highlight here, which has got the property purchase and all the legal fees, including stamp duty land tax. And what we're going to do is enter these three particular transactions. You've got the total amount, which is the property purchase and all the associated fees to go with it. And we've got the amount of deposit, which we may have put in ourselves. And we've got the mortgage advance as well. So what do we do? How do we enter this into QuickBooks? Well, the way I prefer to use it is a supplier invoice for that property. And we're going to assume that this property is called 123 Main Street. So let's go into QuickBooks then. And in here, you should have your QuickBooks account. Now, ideally, you would have a mortgage account set up already. So what you might want to do is go to banking. And in here, you may create add account. So I'm going to create add account on here. And you would follow this process to show you which uh, mortgage company you are working with. Now, if you had Lloyd's, for instance, you would have to put in your account details. We do not have an account, so we're going to make one up as we go through the process. But ideally, this is what you would do instead. And if you've got a direct director's loan account as well, then again, you may want to use that. But ultimately, what we're going to do for now is keep things really simple. So what we're going to do is go to expenses and then suppliers. Now click on expenses and suppliers. And what you'll find is that there's a bunch of supplies. Now you can create your own supplier. Um, you, I would recommend this for the property in question. So what we're going to do is click on new supplier in the top right hand corner. And the first name we're going to call this is, uh, I've already got one account called 123 Main Street, I've just noticed. So I'm going to call this one 234. Main Street. So what this will do is create a supplier 4234 Main Street, which is going to reconcile back to my completion statement. I'm going to click on save for now and get that done. 234 Main Street now appears here and I'm going to create a bill just on the right hand side now. So let's create it on a bill just there. And you'll see that the supplier is indeed 234 Main Street. That's exactly what I want to be showing on there. And I'm just going to put now in terms of category. Now, the category is the expense type. So I'm going to click on buildings, which you'll see there is buildings and improvements, tangible assets. That's one I want. So let's click on that one. I'm going to click on 234 Main Street as well as a title description. The amount is a total amount. So I need to go back to my completion statement to see this 331255. So this could be 331255 and it'll have no VAT just to finish that line transaction off. And if you wanted to, which I would always suggest you do, is click on the attachments down the bottom here and then click on attachments and upload the document. So you'll see I've got a bunch of files here. I'm going to go to the property purchase and then click on there. Now, don't worry, it's a zero. I've used the same completion statement for both applications. So I've now attached that and then I'm going to click on save. Once that is saved, I'm going to click the X button on the left, well, the X marker on the bottom, top right hand corner, I should say. And you'll notice now I've got 234 Main Street and it's got an outstanding balance. What you should see now, if I'm just going to zoom that up, it says make payment. Now, if we go back to our completion statement, we know that we've got a mortgage advance plus the notional direct loan account. So that's money I've deposited in. So what I'm going to do is click on make payment and I'm going to click on that button now. I'm going to zoom out of that screen again. And the PAP is now being put as 234 Main Street. That's absolutely fine. And what we're going to do now is click on direct account. Now I've already created a direct loan account. So I'm just going to click on that for you just there. 
and that will then go against this account. Now I'm going to put in the amount that I deposited, which is 87,505, which is just down here. So I'm going to put in just on the top right, on the right hand side there, the 87,505. And I'm just going to just double check because I think I've got that wrong. No, it's right. So 87,505 is there. And what I'm going to do is then go to the bottom and then click on save. Now I just want to go into save. And close so I'm going to just zoom out of that for a minute just a bit easier oops so I'll just do save new just to make life easier I have to say QuickBooks isn't as uh, easy to navigate through <laughs> as you'd expect uh, so 234 Main Street now appears and you've got this 243750 here I'm going to click on make payment just there and what we're now going to do is click on the mortgage now we may have well created a mortgage account, as I said before, which would have been better for you. But if not, what you could do is create add new. So what we're going to do is put in here Lloyd's 234 Main Street. And the reason why I've done that is because I want to sometimes differentiate one bank account. Now you may have uh, the same Lloyd's bank account that does multiple um, mortgages for you. So don't put in the uh, house address if that's the case. Um, what we're going to do in here is just put a credit card just to differentiate it uh, from everything else I've got and then click on save and close. Once I've done that and I just check that it says 243750, that looks okay to me. Click on save and close or save new. Get rid of it there. And you'll see now that 234 Main Street has got a balance of zero. Now what I want to do is just check that that's okay, that everything has gone through the way I want it to. The best way to do that is to go to your reports just on the left hand side now, click on that, and then check on this balance sheet detail or balance sheet summary. I'm gonna click on balance sheet summary. That will then give me this. And you'll notice now I've got tangible assets of 1362510. All I need to do just to check those balances is click into that amount. And you'll notice now I've got this balance here of these property deals that's gone through. So straight away I've entered a transaction all the way through. 234 Main Street is in there for 331255. Back to my completion statement, there it is. So that checks out okay. So now I want to check the other transactions that's going on. So I'm going to go back to my um, balance sheet. And you'll notice now I've got this credit card outstanding of 243750. Just zooming in here now. And you'll notice that is the same amount that I've got on the mortgage statements here as well. So that is how you can enter the transactions onto QuickBooks.